Good afternoon, everybody. This is station WORD, broadcasting from the great stadium of life. We have for you a play-by-play -play description of the greatest and most important of all gridiron classics, the game of life. Our game here will be underway in just a few moments. And while we await the opening whistle, we'd like to point out some interesting sidelights surrounding this momentous occasion. The weather is ideal in the stadium, even though it really makes little difference, since a game as important as this one must be played regardless of conditions. There's a tremendous crowd on hand today. The stands are literally packed with a great cloud of witnesses, as the writer of Hebrews points out. Down on the field, we can see that both teams are completing their pregame workouts. To our right are the players representing Christianity. And this Christian team, by the way, has the finest of all coaches. Noted for his unerring wisdom, this great mentor, Jesus Christ, is the model of perfection in the coaching realm. However, as we look down to our left, we see another great squad and a very cunning and clever coach. This is the team coached by Satan, the forces of evil. And believe you me, this guy Satan and his men will be tough to handle. There's a great wave of anticipation and expectancy in the crowd as the two teams prepare for the opening kickoff. As you know, the referee for this game of life is God himself, the perfect, just, and all-seeing referee. And the rules of the game, the instructions as to how it should be played, are found in God's book, the Bible. The coaches have given their respective players their last minute instructions, Jesus Christ telling his players, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Christ has now come off the field and it's all up to the players and he's just left with that last minute challenge ringing in their ears. The outcome of this spectacle is all the more important to these alumni who are here because of the fact that the entire hope of Christianity in this, the game of life, depends upon the ball-carrying ability of average Christian. This places a heavy responsibility on average Christian, and that's the reason the eyes of the crowd will be upon him today. Both teams are lined up now for the opening kickoff. The goals of the two teams are exactly opposite, that of Christianity being the goal of heaven, while the forces of evil will head toward their goal, hell. And now it's going to be Satan's team kicking off to Christianity. And there's the referee's whistle as the game is underway. It's criticism kicking a high end-over-end kick. It's taken down on the goal line by Average Christian. He starts up the field as forces of evil players move in on him. Appears just a bit uncertain, but it gets across the 15. Now he cuts to his right and picks up some interference. It's prayer and humility. Average Christian is still going up the far sideline past the 30 with prayer and humility out in front clearing the way. And there's one of Satan's men trying to crash through and Average Christian sidesteps beautifully at the 40, getting away from temptation. Now he runs with added confidence. He crosses the midfield stripe, makes his way toward this side of the field, but he left his interference on the other sideline. Now he's by himself, down to the 45. He sidesteps nicely getting away from hypocrisy and goes to the 43 doing a nice job in the broken field but there's a player coming up from behind he's gaining he dives and makes the tackle beautifully at the 40 yard line in forces of evil territory average christian appeared confident that he was on his way to score but temptation sneaked in and over on the far sideline we can see satan pacing up and down the sidelines getting reserves ready for action Here's Christianity back to the line of scrimmage, and the ball is snapped this time to Average Christian, who drives off his own right tackle, finds a hole, and blasts through to the 32 before the big opposing lineman, Procrastination, brings him to the ground. And the tackle who opened that hole for Average Christian was the very capable and important lineman, Church Attendance. He had a hole there big enough to drive the proverbial truck through, and Average Christian drove through nicely until hit hard by Procrastination in the opponent's secondary. Second down two now as Christianity's out of the huddle once again. The forces of evil set up their defense, and here's the play. It's Average Christian trying the middle of the line. He stopped cold after a pickup of about a yard. It was carelessness on the tackle as good intentions failed to open a hole in the line. In fact, he was in the way himself on that one. Well, it's third down and a yard, and the Christianity team is calling for a timeout. Just what Christianity will do to stop procrastination, hypocrisy, temptation, and the other forces of evil remains to be seen. We've noted in observing some of the onlookers that there are several famous and successful veterans of this big game in the stands today. They are famous alumni who are on hand to pull for men trying to follow in their footsteps. Among them are such notables as Moses, Samuel, Gideon, Peter, Paul, and many, many others. It's time to go back to play now at the Stadium of Life. Christianity out of the huddle and up to the line of scrimmage. Here's the pass from center, and again it's to average Christian. He's coming around his own left end, looking for a chance to cut downfield. Now he got some interference and makes his cut. It's prayer out there again, and humility throws a beautiful block as he gets to the 30. He's still going strong, 
faithfulness comes into that interference. He's to the 25. His average Christian running nicely cuts to his right. He leaves his interference. He's to the 23, all by himself, headed goalward. But a couple of tacklers are trying desperately to catch him from behind. He cuts across the 20. He'll have to hurry. He's hit and fumbles the ball at the 15-yard line. And it's recovered by forces of evil. Average Christian is hurt on the play. He doesn't get up. Average Christian remains on the ground. This boy, Temptation, can certainly get in on plays when least expected. He and Little Sins just came from out of nowhere to bring about the downfall of Average Christian. Well, the coach for Christianity, Jesus Christ, has come onto the field and is working over his ball carrier, Average Christian. Let's take a look. And it looks like Average Christian is going to stay in the ball game. And let's pick up the band music on the far side of the field. And so uh, Average Christian is going to stay in the ball game with the kindly help of Jesus Christ, his coach. Average Christian with tears of humiliation and defeat in his eyes has had the contact with Jesus Christ which has given him reassurance and the realization of forgiveness of his past mistakes. As we go back to play at the Stadium of Life, it's going to be first and ten for forces of evil on their own 15, and they're ready to go, putting the ball in play. Little sends the quarterback, gives it on a pitch out to Hatred, who starts around his own right end with jealousy, leading interference. He makes his cut up field, and he's hit at the line of scrimmage as Love comes in to crash through the interference and knock jealousy out of the way, stopping Hatred at the line of scrimmage for no gain whatsoever. Second and ten now for Forces of Evil. From their own 15-yard line, they come out in a single wing to the right with Luke Warm, the deep man, and the ball is snapped to Luke Warm, who crashes off his own right tackle, finds a hole, and he rips across the 18 to the 20, where he's hit and swarmed under by consecrated life with assistance from prayer and Bible study. A pickup of five yards on the play, so it's going to be third down and an all-important five yards to go. This will be one of the big plays of the game. The ball under the 20-yard line in Forces of Evil territory. All right, it's indifference and selfishness back as the Forces of Evil quickly come to the line of scrimmage. And here's selfishness, giving the ball on a spinner to indifference, who takes it on a reverse around his own left end. He gets to the line of scrimmage with slanderous talk leading the way. Across the 20 he goes. He's to the 21, the 22, the 23, and he's hit at the 24-yard line and knocked down by compassion, kindness, mercy, and willing worker as they swarmed on top of him. Indifference was really wiped out on that play a yard short of a first down. So it's fourth and one, and just what are the Forces of Evil players going to do on their own 24-yard line? They come out of the huddle in deep punt formation with criticism back to do his usual job of kicking. And there's the snap back. The kick is in the air, almost blocked by good intentions. A beautiful spiraling kick which hits upfield across the 50-yard line and comes out of bounds on the 40-yard line in Christianity territory. And there is timeout being called on the field before we go back into play. And it's time to go back to play at the Stadium of Life with Christianity putting the ball in play first and 10 from their own 40. And a man in motion is being sent out to the left as the ball is snapped to Average Christian. He's trying his own left end again. Interference is forming for Average Christian as he cuts up field at the line of scrimmage. It's prayer again along with faithfulness and the powerful downfield blocker witnessing. They're up to the 50 and down into Satan's territory. To the 45. Average Christian appears to have recovered. He's running hard at the 40. Still getting good blocking. He's to the 35. The 30. And running beautifully. He stumbles and falls at the 25 with nobody around. With prayer, faithfulness, and witnessing leading the way, Average Christian just suddenly tripped and fell. And it apparently was Average Christian's overconfidence which stopped a certain touchdown run for Christianity. However, it's still Christianity's ball. First down 10 on the Forces of Evil 25-yard line. Well, we've seen Average Christian with his good and bad moments in this big game, but every time he and his teammates appear to be headed for a touchdown, the failure to follow such strong interference as prayer, humility, faithfulness, and witnessing has been their downfall. Here's the play now. Average Christian starts around his own right end. He cuts quickly inside the end, fakes a handoff, keeps the ball on a very nice play. He sidesteps one man, gets a good block from prayer. Now he seems to be surrounded in the secondary at the 20. He bounces off another and crashes to the 18. Is hit hard at the 15. He turns nicely in the opposite direction, but just a moment. Average Christian, Average Christian fans have suddenly turned and started in the wrong direction. He's headed toward the wrong goal line and running full speed. And the fans are going wild in the stands as teammates chase Average Christian. Call 
at him and try desperately to catch him. He's across the 50, still going the wrong way. And a member of the Christian team is gaining ground at the 40. Now the 35, and this is one of the most confusing plays ever seen. Average Christian is to the 30. He's to the 25, and he's finally caught and tackled from behind at the 20-yard line by one of his own teammates. teammate who finally came in to save the day for Christianity. Let's check him. A substitute who'd just been sent into the game, and that was chastisement. Average Christian got up angry and confused that chastisement tackled him, and now as he looks around, Average Christian seems to be figuring out what happened. He looks to the sidelines and sees his coach, Jesus. Realizing his nearly disastrous mistake, Average Christian sinks to his knees in sorrow and humiliation. There's a brief timeout on the field as criticism came in to discuss something with the officials. Average Christian had gotten caught in the spin of life and turned in the wrong direction, but chastisement finally caught up with him and stopped him to save the day. It'll be second down for Christianity from their own 20, with very little time left in this important game of life, and the situation looks dark for the Christianity team. It's second down and 65 yards to go, but just a second. The great coach, Jesus Christ of Christianity, is sending a substitute into the game. Let's check. He's coming onto the field. Yes, it's the real need for this Christian team right now. The real need, the Holy Spirit coming into the game. And the players seem to be invigorated by the presence of this powerful new performer. And the forces of evil are bracing their defenses as we're ready to go back to action. There'll be time for just one more running play in this game as the Christian team goes into the huddle. And it's the Holy Spirit calling the signals. Nothing, nothing score as Christianity comes out of the huddle. All right, here's the play. The ball is snapped and it goes to average Christian. He's circling his own right in and interference forms in front of him. He makes his downfield cut at the 15. He's up to the 20, running behind prayer, love, Bible study, witnessing, faithfulness, and church attendance. They're headed down the far sideline to the 35, now the 40. And humility runs along, protecting from the rear as the great wave sweeps across the 50. There to the 40, there to the 30-yard line, in the open, with a clear field at the 20, the 10, the 5, and it's a touchdown, and the ball game is all over. Christian had been up and down all afternoon in his ball carrying chores for Christianity the greatest of all coaches Jesus Christ sent in the Holy Spirit as the team's last hope then average Christian with the Holy Spirit calling his signals took the ball on his own 20 started around his own right end and picked up a powerful force of interference composed of prayer love Bible study witnessing faithfulness and church attendance while humility was protecting the entire crew from the rear. It was an unbeatable combination which swept from its own 20 into pay dirt without an opposing hand touching average Christian. And now as the band plays and the shadows creep across the gridiron of the Stadium of Life, we can see one of the most stirring sights we've ever seen. It's the wonderful coach of the Christianity team, Jesus Christ, with his arm of love around average Christian and saying to him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many. And now, this is station WORD saying, it was a pleasure to be with you in this broadcast of the game of life from the magnificent stadium of life and reminding you that when the one great scorer comes to mark against your name, he cares not if you won or lost, but how you played the game.